Warhol said, I'd like him to come to the factory and to write about everything that goes on, on a daily basis. And I thought, okay, this is my chance. And then they asked me if I knew anything about silkscreen. So I said, yeah, I'd done some silkscreen in the past. I do know how to do it. So they brought me a print of Diana Ross. There was a little white spot in her hair. And they said, can you fix this? And so they gave me a little bottle cap with some black ink. And I bent down and I put it up there. And they all stood around and they said, wow, you're such a great artist. And they gave me a job as the diamond duster. So I must have printed 5,000 prints in a short nine-month period. The job was incredibly labor-intensive. We'd been in the middle of a print, and the phone would ring. And when the red phone rang, it meant it was Andy Warhol. And he would say, I don't like the green. I want it changed to Liz Taylor Green. And so they'd send me to this little closet that had millions of cans that would say Liz Taylor Green. And so I grabbed the green, they would remix that, and then they would show him that print and say, okay, I like that green. And so he was radio controlling the operation at all times. We had to clean the screens with gasoline and without any time to think, we had to get the next screen on. The whole place just smelled like incredible fumes. At the factory, they gave me some paper, so I got free paper from there, and I would just work very hard at my own art in the East Village. I felt sort of like I was preordained to get there somehow as an artist in my own right. I felt like you know, I've made it this far to the point where none of my friends could even believe that I was doing this job. I finally started selling some paintings. When Andy bought some paintings and Keith bought some paintings, I would say 1999, I decided to silkscreen some abstract paintings because I thought I'd never seen that before. And I regained my interest in silkscreen again. I think it's a worthy medium to be working in. And the next most exciting silk screens I've made are with Avant Art. They were extremely astute in choosing the images that were not only sort of poppy and vibrant, but also you could get the textural quality of painting out of multiple screens. As a painter, I think very musically. I want them to sound like something. I don't want them to just look like something. And it's really amazing because, you know, there are a number of colors, a number of really complex blends that they managed to get of the tonalities and things, and, and very accurate. Generally speaking, when something's printed, you know, it's almost a reduction of what you've done, but I don't feel like we lost anything in this, getting the feeling of silkscreen back into the painting. We have Lost in Time, which is kind of a hippie-like character. I imagined him as some kind of a lost relic of the 70s or 60s, wandering the sidewalks of Venice Beach in California. As a painter, I'd like to glamorize the sort of normal, everyday human, <laughs> to sort of elevate them to the level of being worthy of being in a painting. And then we've got the large blue head, which is a sort of kaleidoscopic kind of view of a single figure that involves a lot of emotional states taking place at the same time. I don't want to be a representational painter. I want to paint what I think is on the interior, what's actually going through their mind. So both the blue one and the yellow one have a lot to do with the internal dialogue that they may be experiencing joy, horror, happiness, sadness, all of these things at once. You can take what seem to be extremely joyous colors and you can put them together with some degree of, like I say, psychological state where somebody may be in a great mood in the morning and that same person gets horrible news in the afternoon. I think artists like to try to find a way to describe the way that the world works. It's just a question of understanding color balance and physical space.
I've always loved silk screening. But I'd say artists should, you know, even if they never use or try to silk screen anything, they might try to mimic it in their work. They might try to get the effect of silkscreen in their painting. A lot of what aesthetics about is, you know, not just the quality and the conceptual meaning, but just the look. And the look is really great.